Welcome back, everyone, to the glorious Fallout Old World Blues to Lalox Demise. So this is the new update that they have just released for um, Old World Blues, and it's fucking amazing. Um, so as you can see, there's now two quote-unquote scenarios, although it's actually the same one. It's uh, Mexico, but they've completely reworked the UI, and it's really, really cool because it's basically, you know, Fallout 1 and 2. UI and here we are these are the new countries and as you can see they've even got these animated portraits which are cool uh, why are they animated because these are AIs these are artificial intelligences we'll see however um, you know what's going on once we get into it uh, so what we're gonna play is the Republic of the Rio Grande as you might have noticed from the thing um, I am uh, yeah, last time I, I tried a game as these guys, and uh, I did not play on these difficulty settings, but... Yeah, uh, Elite is annoying. Oh, but actually, right, it's um, it's different from what you used to be. We can, we can do Elite. Like, it's gonna be fucking difficult. Yeah, but that research speed fucks you up. So let's do Veteran and just buff up some people. Let's buff up some people. Essentially, we're essentially gonna buff up everyone but us. Just to make sure that, you know, it's difficult. So, why are we doing this? Well, because we will see inside that the focus view for the Republic of the Rio Grande is really cool. And I'll actually um, skip this because it's annoying. Okay, so everyone's buffed up but us. Uh, so, let's get in. So, Republic of the Rio Grande that noise. The Republic of Rio Grande essentially is um, like the only democracy in Mexico and um, as a whole like all these factions that have been added by this update uh, are ba I think mostly just made up but it's got some really cool aspects and as you can see now they've even got like this um, whoa my music what What the fuck? I had installed a mod. Ah, uh, uh, well, we're just gonna have to deal with Hearts of Iron's classic music for this one, and uh, for the next one, I'm gonna get some more um, music of my own because Jesus Christ, these mods never work. Anyway, um, so basically, uh, this is like you know a thing where you can see mechanics, and it's cool because you know it's cool. Um, change log regions so you can see like which countries are everywhere you can get a brief description on them we are right now in the land of Titans um, and um, you can see that different countries have different things so let's take a look at the Republic of the Rio Grande the Republic of the Rio Grande is a democratic nation founded on the principles of liberty freedom and a freedom from oppression and equality for all originally a collection of American occupation troopers and the Mexican nationals under their boot the early years of the nations were fraught with tension and strife the Republic of the Rio Grande was not always a democracy, however, and it first existed as a self-imposed military dictatorship. After 30 years of preparation and rebuilding, the dictatorship was phased out for a fully-fledged democratic republic, which still functions in 2275. So that's where we are. And um, we also have Venus, the Texan Arms Association, on the other side of the Rio, the river. Um, and... Um, we can see that right now we have a pretty strong industry in terms of everything. So we have 14 civilian workshops and 9 arms workshops. But 9 arms workshop are basically all east of the Rio Grande because these are the Texan uh, sort of gun runners, uh, gun barons. And uh, these oligarchs are a bit of a thorn in our side because they are part of our republic they cooperate all that but they do kind of things their own way because of capitalism and all that uh, this is our army obviously and uh, here we go let's train up some stuff um yeah i'm gonna get all those cool researches 
And uh, because we are on veteran difficulty, our research speed is going to be lower. We can do the intros, but we don't care. And, um... Yeah, there we go. There's gonna be quite a bit of skipping from me in this uh, in this playthrough because there are quite a lot of waiting periods, events, all that. So it's gonna have to be a game of uh, wait every once in a while. So yeah, just bear in mind I will be skipping through quite a bit of it. And uh, yeah, we need build. Oh, and by the way, they've reworked the naval system <laughs> to fit with Old World Blues, which is hilarious. It's like, not even like, you just, oh my god, this is like so fucking hilarious. Like, basically, um, you can see from the name, it's like longboat, trireme, canoe, and the weapon mounts and, you know, modules are just like, you know, messenger seagulls. Scout seagulls. Uh, point defense is coach guns. So, yeah, I just. It's so well done. So well done. So, yeah, we're gonna be building one of these, and then we're gonna build convoys because we're gonna need those eventually. And in terms of the focus tree, here it is. Um, so, we always have all the story events uh, that you know and love. Uh, at the beginning. Then there's a m little military branch with three uh, things, one for automation, one for conventional warfare, one for uh, specialized warfare spec ops. Uh, then there's a bit of aircraft and quite a lot of sea because we have, you know, the bay over here at the Gulf of Mexico and the Rio Grande that we can sail down. Uh, it's kind of in our name. And um, then you have on the left hand industry tech tree you can get quite a good economy quite quickly then there's two sub trees for crises that are going to pop up they're going we're going to see later and then in the middle is the political tree we have three people uh that can lead our republic free presidents there is mora who uh, wants to sort of unite mexico under his military rule and um you know go around and kill everyone because that's fun um then there is Dante, who is our current leader, Dante Guerra. Uh, he is our current leader and, you know, he wants to stabilize the Republic and, you know, sort of build a whole security partnership in the North and also kill Caesar's Legion because historically in the lore that they've made up for the Republic of the Rio Grande, there was like a kind of sort of minor legion invasion so the republic of the rio grande hates the legion a lot so all of the candidates really want to kill them but uh dante guerra especially dislikes kaiser's legion i believe it's because like um there, there might be like some kind of some kind of reason for it but whatever um and then there is the final one, that's the one that we're gonna pick. It's Rosado, Valentina Rosado, who wants to build a technological paradise. And uh, the way that she's gonna do that is fun, and we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna get into that later on. I'm not gonna, quote unquote, spoil it for now. Um, so yeah, see you in a little bit once things, or, and um, well, I guess let's also introduce some of the more important, while well, we have time, some of the more important actors on the Mexican stage. No, nope. you're not gonna let me increase speed? Retard. Um, so there's the main, main one to ourself is Tlalocan, uh, or Tlaloc. Uh, and he is, well, he, I don't even know. It is a weird AI that was made up, uh, made by the, uh, by the American military, I believe, to sort of protect Mexico. However, it's uh, starting to spaz out. It's quote unquote considered dead, but uh, it's right now protecting areas of Mexico, like, so that basically Mexico is like a kind of self-contained arena because if someone tries to get in there Tlaloc is gonna come in and kill them and kill them he will because he has a really powerful military and uh, bonuses but he's got this memory loss thing 
because, I don't know, he's not working as well as he did. And he's got several children, quote unquote, uh, which are like sub aspects of the AI. One of them is Santa Ana over here, um, who spawns at the beginning and uh, he's also really powerful because he's got advanced robotic armies and, you know, big ol' uh, big ol' buffs. Uh, but there's three more that can spawn um, once he completes his focus tree, Last Will and Testament. Uh, and uh, once he does that, things get nasty because his free, you know, his free um, children are insane, basically, because the pro programming is wrong. Uh, then there's a bunch of like miners all over, uh, you know, cartels, fucking wrestlers, um, and yeah, just a bunch of random people. Then there's two other superpowers, uh, Nueva Atzlan and Chichen Itza, so like the Mayans and the Aztecs, and these guys kill each other, essentially all the time, and uh, their kingdoms, empires, little things, uh, and they can go both like different routes, but they're mostly just, you know, they've got three paths each, I believe. Um, where is it? So basically here you can have like the either the army takes over, the current ruler continues ruling, and uh, and then the schemer guy, uh, populist monarch. So that's the three factions there. Then there's three factions in uh, Aslan as well. There is the Jaguar, the nobles, and the empress, I believe, uh, the speaker. And uh, the Jaguar are like the elite warrior people of this society, and they've got like, you know, cool ass, weird Aztec power armor. Uh, I don't even know. Um, but I don't know who, what each of these do, so yeah, I've just taken a look at the focus trees. Anyway, the Republic were born. So in the year 2051, the United States invaded and occupied Mexico, citing political instability, environmental impact, and the protection of American citizens as the reason. Uh, and this is an event that deals with us as well. Um, in truth, the move was made to protect American interests in Mexico, specifically large portions of the oil industry owned by American corporations. And actually, one other of uh, uh, one other of the states that are around has to do with that, Petro Chico. Um, fucking hilarious. And um, yeah, like, oh, they've renamed fuel into energy cells. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Uh, so, you know, in Mexico, there's quite a bit of energy cells for the taking. Um, although the occupation went smoothly at first, blah, 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 resistance, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they formed the Republic of the Rio Grande as an independent nation, quote unquote, independent. Uh, and so the American occupation authorities in the 24 years before the Great War uh, focused on either military industry or infrastructure. Now, military industry adds arms workshops to Gloria, our capital, which is really useful considering what's gonna happen very soon. Uh, however, and 500 basic weapons, which is A not- A glorious victory, comrade. Okay, uh, which is not bad, but I mean, infrastructure, seriously, it's gonna add um, infrastructure to every state, which is really, really useful. Really, really fucking useful. So let's take the infrastructure. Uh, then Armageddon Station. So, if there's any place in Mexico where you can still smell the pride and fear of the old world, it's Armageddon Station. Armageddon Estacion. Down here. It's in our territory. Uh, the station was designed before the Great War as a backup for American control of Mexico in case of a nuclear war. Uh, containing manufacturing facilities, equipment, resources to rebuild in the event of a nuclear holocaust. Legends tell of rooms full of power armor and blazer rifles and caverns con containing gex and construction equipment. There's just one problem, nobody can get in. The facility was supposed to be always occupied, but American soldiers deserted when the bombs fell. Uh, and anyone who wants to enter the facilities needs the four keys scattered across Mexico. Tlaloc received one, a gift from the United States Army. Um, Rio's puppet president had one. As did Colm Griffin, who was a guy that um, was in charge of American military units in this area. So, yeah. Um, Gloria does holds two, so we have two. And Santa Anna acquired the fourth. 
for ways you don't want to ask about, apparently. Uh, the keys are named after the four horsemen of the apocalypse. War, famine, death, and plague. Whoever o owns all four has the keys to Armageddon. So, that sounds ominous. So that's basically uh, one of the endgame goals, is to unlock the Armageddon station and unleash its power for good or, Ill, for good, for good or ill. So, nuclear rain. Uh, the Great War came without a warning and left everything in a state of disarray, blah blah blah. Everything went bad, essentially. Um, the Americans decided to sort of disobey their orders and instead of just locking themselves up, they helped to save um, the population. And so uh, we either got from them knowledge or experience. Experience adds one skill to every unit leader and 10 army experience. We only have two leaders, so I really don't know why we would pick that. We're just going to pick knowledge to get uh, Mexican spirit, national spirit thing. So that's going to be quite useful. And then democratic apocalypse. Uh, three decades after the Great War, the Republic of the Rio Grande has been, uh, was still a shadow of its former self. It had been in a self-imposed dictatorship for the last 30 years, but with the death of Colonel Griffin, the Republic transitioned into a democracy as he'd wished. Setting up elections for the numerous branches of the government... Oh, wait, hold on. What is this? Oh, yeah, right. Um, it's useful to have army experience. But first... Um, but it does, that, that one also gives you political power, so let's rush for that. Um, setting up elections were numerous branches of the government, as well as for the president themselves, was much harder than anticipated. But at the end, it happened. The first president of the republic, Julieta Torres, built her platform around the reclamation of lost land. Over the next few years, they reclaimed Mexico's largest steel factory, which is uh, Rio's Steel Heart. Uh, I don't even know, like... What is this supposed to be IRL? But it's cool because it's like, you know, the memory of its original name has been erased. It's now just real steel heart where we produce 46 scrap metal. Just fucking amazing. Um, mines and key supply depots. Numerous other facilities and locations were captured, such as Armageddon Station and the city of Monclova. Uh, Armageddon Station is down here, and Monclova, I believe, is this one. Um, none of these came without losses as the bandits who set up camp in Monclova and across most of the uncontested territory proved difficult to dislodge. A border was drawn from the point at which the Republic could expand no longer. To their south was some unknowable agent whose robots were content to, or seemed content to protect their border for them. Uh, and to the west sat a great desert, um, which is this one. From, uh, from across which no invader could hope to prevail. Uh, Julieta's eight-year term came to a close soon as after she met her goals. Uh, she chose to run again once more. What uh, This time her platform was centered around reconstruction and preservation. What did she prioritize? Repairing the foundry or repairing the city? So we're either going to get 20 monies or... Uh, 20, 20 medals or 2,000 manpower and 111 uh, infrastructure civilian workshop. Uh, considering that you don't have that much scrap metal at the start, um, I feel like going for the scrap metal is much superior, because scrap metal is cool. Uh, then hubris. Near 2263, so quite a while ago, 12 years ago, drunk off the success and inevitable conquest of New Mexico, one of the Legion Centurions petitioned uh, Kaisar for the opportunity to prove himself, for himself further afield. He argued that the Legion shouldn't just stop in New Mexico, it should continue on to Texas and to war of your foes. Blah, 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 blah. Bunch of shit happened. Pause to read, if you want. The guy's name is Paulus because he is like Stalingrad. And uh, he, he should have won because the Republic back then had no military. Now things have changed. We have a strong army, but... Um, he almost won. Almost. Because we are so cool. Triumph. When Centurion Navius had his men disembark in North Coahuila, uh, the Republic didn't even know they were being invaded. Blah, blah, blah. A bunch of things happened. Uh, Mora. Uh, President Leonardo Mora. I'm not sure if it's the same guy. Uh, let's click things. Yeah, it's th that guy. Uh, oh, and by the way, we're going to get to that later, because there's more cool things. Isn't this just the best? Um, 
President Moore gathered his men, blah, blah, blah. He, he killed them. How did he kill them? Either under the cover of night or between the rocky desert crags, which is going to give us defense and defense on core territory or land night attack and reconnaissance. Fucking hell, why would you pick the division defense on core territory? I have no idea. Anyway, now we have completed our story event. So to recap, uh, we were formed by a cooperation between uh, what was supposed to be an army of occupation that decided to be a little less nasty than it could have been. Um, and the local population, we became a democracy. Then the Legion invaded, uh, or the Fire Nation, and uh, shit went bad. But we survived, and uh, we are a beacon of industry among uh, among the glorious remnants of Mexico. Um, and yeah, we've got a bunch of problems, however, because again, as I said, the Texans are a bunch of dicks, really. Um, across the Rio Grande, they own most of our military industry. And we're gonna see soon that they have some, um, they have some nasty things that they can do to us. And the reason I prioritize the military is because I want to get the political mastermind as soon as possible, Dominic Unger. And now we're gonna go for the industrial subsidies. Um, before I go, I'm gonna explain a few more mechanics that are around. What you saw earlier on here is the Senate of the Republic. Okay, hold on. There you go, political mastermind. Excellent. So now that's gonna increase our political power gain, and that's really important because um, later on, once the election campaign starts, and we're gonna have to pick between one of these three individuals to run our country, um, we're going to need to sway senators to our side. Uh, the way that the elections seem to work is kind of an electoral college kind of system, where if the senators support you, uh, your candidate is going to be elected. From like the last time I played, uh, I got 50% and that was enough to win the election. So we're going to need to sway a bunch of senators to our side, and the way we're going to do that is by spending political power. So, uh, yeah. Um, and then once the election is over, uh, there's going to be more mechanics that are going to be unlocked uh, by the candidates that has won. Unfortunately, it doesn't really seem like there's many events that deal with um, the whole political situation, which is a sad state of affairs because I feel like it could be useful. Um, now, in terms of our land doctrine, we're going to keep it the way it is right now, even though later on we want to go for automated warfare. Uh, we're gonna keep conventional warfare though for the beginning because we're gonna have a couple of wars um, And that couple of wars in that couple of wars It's gonna be useful to have that doctrine already researched because at the beginning of uh, automated warfare You don't really get like that many bonuses Although I mean it's not like you get that many on that side as well Division speed plus five percent, oh, but that's a tactic Oh no, the vision speed was like percent overall. Hmm. Human targeting firmware. Oh, well, I mean, then it gets into the robots. But yeah, essentially, we want to be robot people. Because it's cool, and I almost never do it. So, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Uh, Pioneer kit sounds pretty useful, but it's way too late. Um, or rather, it's way too early. Let's get some tools. And the construction speed. Very nice. Um, yeah, I guess uh, we have most of uh, everything. I had Texan arms families. We have most of everything explained at the beginning. Uh, these are our decisions. We have the Republic of Rio Grande radio. Hola, amigos. This is RRG Radio bringing you the latest. Uh, great stuff. Really great stuff. Uh, so we can report news from the front when we're at war. Uh, get a bonus when we're fighting Santa Ana. Uh, and then just the usual, usual stuff, recruitment drive, and uh, justify war goal time, minus 15. Then there's the Republic of Rio Grande Congress, which is going to be later on. It's going to be later on. And um, then uh, there's going to be more decisions that, decisions that pop up later on. So now that it's all over, I am going to... Um, Peace out until something's going on. Okay, so here's where trouble starts erupting. Uh, Guerra bans trade with the Legion. 
uh, the Legion's rapid expansion during the TAA or disrupted the TAA's traditional markets, literally raising some clients but creating a huge market in Flagstaff. Uh, despite efforts to ban the trade, many of the TAA's weapons fell uh, off a of Brahmin and ended up in Legion hands. Um, in the eyes of Guerra, um, <laughs> I like that, by the way. Um, in the eyes of Guerra, arming the Legion for its next invasion of Mexico is a bad thing. Guerra chose to dust off an old Rio law that imposed a death penalty on anyone who could sol who sold weapons to raiders and decreed that the Legion was nothing more than a band of raiders. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's a good idea, but bad things will happen because of it. Um, yeah. Never... You know, never separate a Texan from his profits, pretty much. And it, look at that, Radiation Storm, that's new. And they've even got like new tile, you know, models. They've even got, um, I don't know why, but they've even got new urban terrain. Um, I, the reason I don't know why is, I don't know why there's a Shady Sands <laughs> down here. I'm sure it's supposed to be normal urban, but if you take a look at like the more important um, locations in the Fallout universe, such as, as you can see there, Shady Sands, but also the hub. Uh, they've also got their, their all, they've all got their unique like terrain types with um, actually different um, stats as well that go along with it. So, for example, apparently Ashton is thirty percent attack. Which is what? Even less than a mountain? Insane. Yeah, apparently these these places are really difficult to attack into. Really, really difficult. New Vegas as well. Really fortified. Nellis Air Force Base. Jacobstown. There's all these places. Bitter Springs. Attack 67% apparently. Uh, there's even Hoover Dam. But apparently it's not... Like, it doesn't... I don't know, it's not counting as a fortification or whatever. Uh, then there's the Helios 1 facility, Hidden Valley bunkers. Yeah, just a bunch of places everywhere and it's really cool. And there we go, all the bad things that were being hinted at have surfaced. The Day of the Dead. 19th of October 2027, 20, 2275 is remembered as in Republic history as the Day of the Dead. The day that Gloria burned. The day it smelled of ash and burning fat. The TAA set off a series of bombs at key locations in the Republic. The Capitol building, the Congress, the munitions depots, and in the bridges connecting Texas to Mexico. Even as Guerra tried to organize a relig uh, relief effort, uh, he learned that the TAA had declared independence in a gunsmith's estate. Uh, so the TAA estate over there. The secession of the TAA was a near fatal blow to Rio. Uh, with its capital ablaze and the munitions industry across the river in a hostile country, the nation's army was on the verge of collapse even as Paulus was raiding its borders. To solve the crisis, Rio's leaders would have to handle both the TA and the Legion remnants on their borders. Dios mio! So we get national crisis, the Texas secessionists, and the Republic of the Rio Grande. And we have to release the Texan Arms Association under the leadership of Todd Howitzer, uh, who is a Chad, apparently. Fucking hell. Anyway, shit now is officially hitting the fan. Now, um, right now I am justifying a war goal on uh, the Sinaloa cartel, and uh, the fact that the day that has happened has unlocked the middle part of the focus stream. So here is where we choose essentially who we're gonna go for. Um, either the hero, the president, or the engineer. And uh, that unlocks campaign decisions to uh, get them elected. If we do nothing, I believe uh, Guerra will get elected because right now he has the majority of the Senate. Uh, but hey, we're gonna go down and take some stuff. Um, and then we can get a bunch of focuses to essentially deal with the crisis that has popped up. One of them, or, or the main, the middle part is for the economy, because right now it's fucked. We have the national crisis, and uh, shit's bad. 
Uh, then, uh, yeah, it goes down and we take all that stuff. Uh, then another one is for uh, retaking the TAA. Um, you know, destroying the secession. And we have three options to do that. One is uh, uh, essentially Mora's path, where we uh, try to make the people in the Rio Grande rebel against the um, against the you know gun corporations. Uh, we can negotiate for compromise as Guerra and sign a trade deal and make them our sort of semi puppet and trade partner. Um, or hmm, the Brotherhood. Uh, we can establish the Rio chapter of the Brotherhood. We're gonna see how that happens. So Paulus, the Red Wolf. Uh, Centurion Navius Paulus uh, did not leave Mexico after his defeat. Uh, for he knew Caesar would not tolerate failure. Instead, he and the band of followers have continued to prey on Rio's outskirts. What? What? What the fuck? How did... How did you get here? Sloan first man at arms. How did you get here? I, oh my god, whatever. I don't even know anymore. Anyway, uh, instead he and a band of followers have continued to prey on Rio's outskirts, awaiting better days and dreaming of Mexico's riches. Uh, Paulus was largely a nuisance, but everything changed when the TAA attacked, when the Fire Nation attacked. Uh, deprived of much of its army, its capital ablaze, and its economy in disarray, Paulus's crimson banner was carried at will throughout Rio's heartland, in some cases approaching Gloria itself. So now we have uh, Paulus's raiders, minus 5% stability and plus 2% war support. So now our stability and war support are in the shitter. And uh, we're gonna do the engineer's ambition. Um, now, this person, Valentina Rosada, has contacts with the Brotherhood, apparently. So, uh, her options, her choices, and how to deal with the crisis uh, always reflect the Brotherhood <coughs> being involved and being friendly with us because apparently there's a Brotherhood chapter in Texas, although Texas hasn't been added to Old World Blues yet. Uh, it will at some point, and it will have a bunch of uh, nasty factions all over. Um, so yeah, uh, that's basically um, what she's gonna do. She's gonna invite in the Brotherhood, say you can be, uh, you can you know control the industry over here autonomously and get all the technology because if there's one thing that both Rosada and the Brotherhood are into is uh, tech. And um, in return, you're gonna kill these people for us. Um, which is the reason why I am justifying on uh, Sinaloa Cartel at the same time. You might be saying, you don't have a lot of troops, especially if you're gonna need to cross a river. Uh, but that's actually not the case because since we're gonna choose Rosada, I mean, and also one thing that I should mention is that you can you can take these uh, paths like all the time for everyone. It's just you know if you're gonna choose one candidate, I guess it's quote unquote more uh, I don't know uh, role playish to go with the choices that they'd want. So I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, so basically the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna get a puppet uh, Brotherhood of Steel chapter, which is quite useful because they spawn with power armor troops and uh, you, I don't know if you've noticed, but we don't have power armor troops and I don't know if you remember, but power armor troops are good And uh, so we're gonna get our fleet patrolling the river So that they can't cross while we can cross Which is always a cool thing There we go and, uh, yeah, now the Texan Arms Association is a little shit stain upon our glorious republic. And, uh, we're gonna go down and instantly kill them. Because we can just, like, go down from Rio Contingency Bureau down and take them out. Uh, so that's gonna be useful. And then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna meet you back whenever something useful is going on. <laughs>